Uh, we're going to move quickly on to our second um, international case study. It's my great pleasure to welcome uh, James Gross, uh, Director of uh, BBN Donovan uh, Hill. I had the pleasure of visiting his studio uh, in Australia and seeing some amazing work. He's going to talk to us about the ASB Bank in Auckland. James. Perhaps. <laughs> Do I have to click this? No. Okay, I'm going to zoom through this. This is really the case place uh, because I'm an architect and I've heard this word uh, perhaps way too many times, uh, but it's part of our lexicon now. And this is really about Agile's case place as well. Architecture's major task is to, is to bridge the individual and the social. So uh, we might call it virtual, a virtual society we lived in, live in. I prefer to call it a visceral society. And how do we bring virtual and visceral together? Well, that's what we talk about when we talk about place in workplace. But if you lose place, uh, then all you end up with is virtual, which is, of course, an ephemeral thing. And no one can really get a tactile hold of what it means to be virtual. So what we say is one of the basic human requirements is the need to dwell and to engage and connect. Uh, Charles this morning was essentially talking about the livability of a city, which is a tactile experience, uh, as, as we know. <coughs> but let's talk to Vitruvius, who was the first architect in 80, uh, 80 uh, to 15 BC. You might know him by Vitruvian man. Uh, and he said, uh, living in a community is endemic. So this is what he proposed, that we're all running around, we gathered in a clearing in the forest, we invented language to talk, and then we invented community, and then we invented how to live together. And then we invented how to really live together, and that's what a workplace is. It's like this, we all love these places, we all architects like to get a bit of uh, Italian architecture into their talk. Uh, we all know what it's like in here. Uh, and this is the real heart of these places, these village, villages we go to, and you see people hanging around, having coffee, talking, choosing how to be visceral in that space. This is one of our solutions to making that space inside a contemporary workplace building. It's tactile, it's human scaled, and that's what we call place. Architects always use metaphor as well. So consider the Borletto. You'll say, what is the Borletto? The Borletto belongs in this place, and it's one of these buildings that sits on the edge of an urban square. It's the democratic place of assembly. It's the first place in an Italian architectural sense of assembly. And it's on the edge of the square, sort of like this, or in a grand scale, it's like this, which of course, again, is a workplace that we commonly now talk about. This is the building in Auckland for the ASB Bank. And it's really just a borletto of, of sorts. This is the, in ABW terms, this is the plaza floor and then connected to office floors above it. In long section, you can see this, I hope you can see this, a gray tone that runs through there. And that's a whole connected, uh, uh, integral space. What we call the Boletto then becomes this complex place. How do you, how do you seek diversity in planning? Uh, how, do you, how do you recreate that fabulous uh, Italian square inside a building? Well, this is our attempt. You create intimacy. Lots of people have talked about the need for intimacy in space uh, and diverse places so that we get that as well as we get this idea of finding intimacy uh, inside a big container. So in cross-section, you can see that this is the main social floor, and then it rises up in a very complex and diverse uh, three-dimensional space. And then as the plan is bigger, you can see the cafe, how you come into the space, and then all of these things that sit around them, around the cafe, which are all, as it were, themed uh, to make this idea of a forced complexity, if you like, uh, with this stair that goes up through a central space, uh, a ring of uh, petitions around the cafe, which is a, a, a relaxing timber place to sit in, and then a street that takes you through these more complex uh, themed areas of the containers, uh, the uh, aquapods, as we call them. You'll see there's a theme here, and you'll see why it's about water in a minute. Uh, these things were made by New Zealand boat builders. Uh, and then the more uh, interesting kind of funky places within this complex place. Above all this is ABW, which is about choice. In the green floors, uh, the floor looks like that, and it's divided into a series of neighbourhoods. And they are all based on the same pieces of furniture, but in different arrangements. Again, for complexity and diversity and choice. And there's 15 bits of furniture that all sit in the same uh, building, but in different arrangements. And ranging <coughs> from 
high focus to low focus. So the pieces are all designed for intimacy, for public work or private work. And they, they form spaces like this that you would have seen many times now in, uh, in publications and so on across the world. These spaces start to look the same in many ways. The other thing is how do we make community? And in a space like this, we make community by putting pathways all the way through the centre of the building so that you get these bridges, these timber walkways. In Australian New Zealand, of course, timber is emblematic material. Uh, and sets of stairs that connect people uh, all throughout the building. And this major stair that rises up through the centre. <coughs> How do you make public private space? The ground floor is all completely open to the public. So you can walk through it, you can walk through the front of the building and up into the building uh, through a laneway, which we've tried to say, if this is a public laneway open 365 days of the year, how do we break down solid buildings so that you get clear and transparent space so that the public can feel like they're participating inside a building. You can see over here is the public street down here, and always when you're in the building, you're aware of participating in this public domain at the bottom of the slide. People in nature, fresh air, uh, we have naturally ventilated building, so the air comes through the cone at the top, so it's a very emblematic thing about sustainability. The air comes through here, up through the curvaceous form, and out through the top uh, in a controlled uh, natural environment. <coughs> Sunshine and daylight, it's a great client. He lets put things like this on the roof, which of course bring lots of sunlight down through into the centre of the building as well. And you can get outside. So that's all about well-being. And then you consider the setting, pretty nice setting. Uh, that's the building in its setting, so that's why it's all those water themes, of course. Uh, it sits on the side of the harbour, creating a bit of a presence. Uh, and it's about this, of course, because when, then when you start to look inside, you see how the idea of the outside has come uh, to the inside of the structure. And so I like to think of this as being in the engine room of a ship rather than a romantic idea of being on some sailing boat. Uh, so you get that sense of the real sort of industrial aesthetic. It's emblematic because it's about, about New Zealand. This is the Pahutikawa leaf, and those holes are uh, by some grub that lives on a leaf, the Pahutikawa leaf. And we took that leaf, we turned it into sun shading, and it's a drawing where we talk about how, how leaves can look like sparkling sun on water, and like this and like this. And here's the water, here are the leaves. And then we made four and a half thousand pieces of aluminium on the facade uh, that works to um, enhance the sustainability of the building from a, a, an environmental point of view. But it gives this great pattern inside, which is like being on the inside of a, uh, of a tree, of a tree canopy. I think a building like the this building. tells the public and tells Auckland that we are an innovative bank. It's always been one of our pillars. But to have that represented externally in the way we look and in our footprint on Auckland, you know, I think it really says who we are quite clearly, and I'm quite proud of that. The thing that I notice most when I'm wandering around is the vibrancy and the energy that this building provides. You see people sitting in little spaces and collaborating and it's just taken that whole feeling of, of team to a different level. We have in this building 90% staff satisfaction. A number of times I've been here on the weekends and see them bringing their families through, which says that they love it. This is their home, that's what they want. I'm so much more visible to people that I just wander around the building and see people and it's just great to be able to have those informal chats. So it really has broken down a lot of the barriers between the leadership and the people in the building and I think it's been a really effective thing for our culture. It's light, it's airy, it's distinctive. It's something that culturally we're really proud of. We love showing people through the building. It's like our home. So that's what I call visceral. And I call it agile as well. Uh, so that's the case for place, but it's actually, of course, the case for people. Thanks.